start your Saturday evening off right with some Northern 10 boys basketball. The Upper Sandusky Rams still in search of victory number one. Take on a one win Cyrus squad. We got all the action coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, and the smart device you have, and it's coming your way next. to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's Ferion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Ferion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Welcome you inside the Kimmel Corporation pregame show. Back here at Upper Sandusky High School. Game number two of our Upper Sandusky doubleheader as the Lady Rams knocked off the Cyrus this afternoon. Hello, everybody. My name is Travis Berardi alongside Joshua Banks. And Josh, uh, you know this be Cyrus team pretty well. Uh, looking for number two, win number two against an Upper Sandusky squad that they don't have a win to show yet, but they're getting better each and every game. Yeah, absolutely. You had the pleasure of being here last night when Upper Sandusky gave a very talented Mohawk team a run for their money. So it's going to be interesting to see. You know, we, we see Upper's lineup. They're, they're huge across the board. Cyrus has a couple kids that have decent size, but it's going to be interesting to see. Can Upper get win number one, and can Cyrus control the paint? Yeah, uh, it was a pretty darn good effort by Upper Sandusky. They were with Mohawk, who's undefeated right now. Pretty much the whole game until, you know, Mohawk pulled away. But let's take a look at our team spotlight first for the visiting squad tonight. The Usiris Redmond. Under head coach Scott Gifford. 1-5 overall. 0-3 in the conference. Last year only 3-20. 1-13 in the Northern 10. They fell to Seneca East in a sectional semi by 20. 72-52 this year. Averaging 49 points per game. They're allowing 63.5 though. So the defense, they've really got to pick it up. Shooting wise, from two point, 46.5 percent While from beyond the arc, they're shooting 31.9. At the free throw line, about 55.9 percent, which is about the norm around the area. But this is a team that, you know, they, they got one win so far, but they have a chance of getting a quality victory tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see them have that one win on their record, but I think we can be in agreement here. That one win was over Temple Christian, who is in a basketball powerhouse in the area. So it'll be nice to see if they can come in and, and get that first N10 win tonight and second win of the season. And one of the players that helped the Cyrus Redmond along the way this season is one Malachi Bayless. You heard him from football season as well. The junior guard 
so sweet, he deserves his own Christmas cookie out here. This season averaging 11.2 points per game, 3.4 rebounds, 2 assists. Shooting-wise, he's shooting 47.2% from inside the arc, 33.3% from outside the arc. One of the main cogs of this team, third team all Northern 10 last season. Yeah, Malachi is a, a very talented athlete in, in every sport that he plays. You know, you heard his name during football. You're going to hear it during basketball. He's also going into track this year in the spring. Just an all-around athlete. He can shoot the ball well. He can play the point guard if he needs to. They have him listed at six foot. So undersized in a game tonight when you've got three upper Sandusky Rams that stand six foot five across the board. And speaking of the Upper Sandusky Rams, let's take a look at their team spotlight. Once again, brought to you by Kimmel Corporation under head coach Jeff Winslow. Looking for victory number one. They're getting closer, though, nearly knocking off undefeated in first place in the Northern 10 Mohawk last night in the game you could see on replay on the OH Report on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Uh, this is their first 0-6 start under head coach Jeff Winslow in the last 10 years. And uh, talking to a couple media members that have covered the Northern 10 for quite a while, they don't remember the last time that Upper Sandusky's had a start like this. 0-3 in the Northern 10 as well. Scoring 49.2 points per game, but kind of like you, Cyrus, they're allowing a lot more points. However, that ballooned up because of the way Tiffin Columbian was able to make every single shot in their game. Shooting from two, 51.8, 37.6 from beyond the arc, and at the line, they're pretty good, 69.6. This team, they were close last night, and Coach Jeff Winslow says they keep getting a little bit better game in and game out, and they would like to, you know, get into the Christmas break with possibly a couple wins tonight, maybe Friday against Buckeye Central. One of the main pieces of that team, Levi Lamb, the senior guard, nine points per game this season, one rebound, 2.2 assists, and shooting. He is 53% from inside the arc, 40% from outside the arc, and he is two for two at the free throw line, but he is one of the sharpshooters, one of the bright spots this season despite the 0-6 record. Yeah, I mean, 50-40-90 club, as we call it, with players in the NBA is something that's rather hard to accomplish, and you see him doing it at the high school level. So just about ready for the anthem here at Upper Sandusky High School for this Northern 10 clash, the fourth game on the schedule for every team. Uh, Colonel Crawford's taking on Seneca East tonight, and Buckeye Central is taking on Cary in other games across the Northern 10. We'll try and get you some scores as the night goes on, but uh, love these early 6 o'clock starts as well, 6, 6.30 starts. You know, it's bowl season. We got three NFL games going on today, so uh, finish off your evening here with some high school boys basketball. But let's throw it down to the court for the playing of our national anthem by the Seneca East Pep Band. Back here inside the Kimmel Corporation pregame, and let's take a look at the keys to the game. First, for the Bucyrus Redman. And first for them, throw off the tempo. Upper Sandusky, if they can get into a groove tonight, they will, you know, that's how they score their points. But if Bucyrus can throw them off their tempo, yeah, they'll have a chance. Also, guarding the perimeter. This is a team that, you know, they want to 
uh, they they like to shoot from beyond the arc. That's how they get their offense going. If they can really guard the perimeter, then they'll be able to really take on that inside game. Now let's take a look at the upper Sandusky. Keys to victory once again brought to you by Kimmel Corporation. And they need to build off of last night's game. They have to build off of that. They competed against one of the best teams in the Northern 10. They just have to, you know, a couple of things go their way. They might get that win last night. And then the second one, the inside-out game. If they can get that game going inside the paint, it's going to open up that outside shot beyond the arc. Yeah, absolutely. Upper Shandusky needs to use their size advantage. They absolutely have one across the board tonight. They need to feed the ball to the post and, and just – play, like you said, inside out. Feed it to the post, get the open three, knock the shot down, and we'll definitely see the Rams get their first win tonight if they use these two things. Let's take a look at the starters for the Rams. Same as last night, Holton Darris, Brock Montgomery, Levi Lamb, Ethan Kessler, and Kamen Isles, who got his first start last night and did pretty darn good. So he deserves another start for the Rams. And now let's take a look at the starters for the Redmen, Blaine Bardo, Noah Burke, Caven Combs, Malachi Bayless, and Randy Banks. There's the 5-4 upper and Fusiris as we are just about ready to go. This has been the Kimmel Corporation pregame. It's time for some Northern 10 boys basketball. Kessler and Burke. Burke wins the tip, and we're underway. Bayless with it. Works his way around to Randy Banks. Bartow is upper in there. Man to man defense. Bayless cuts right down the middle. Nice pass inside. Layup shot in and out. No good. Rebound. Fought for. And I think we're going to get a foul. And we are. Foul's going to go against Noah Burke. So the first foul on the rebound attempt. Yeah, it's great hustle there by Noah to try to get the offensive board. Wasn't sure, couldn't tell from this distance if he was hitting arm or hitting ball. Officials had him hitting arm, so that's why we got the foul call. Rams with their first possession off deflection, but still goes in. Cayman Isles just talked about him. First field over the game, it's 2 nothing upper. Back comes upper, or Cyrus, my correction, Bayless. Right side, the Combs now to Burke. In the corner, gets it back out front. Looking back door to Barto. He'll kick it back outside the arc. And they will reset. Just a minute gone by here, 2-0 Upper Sandusky. Bayless over the Combs. Upper really making it hard early on. That was a nice pass inside. Shot doesn't go, and the rebound to Upper Sandusky. Another one and done. Back. And that, that's great defense down low. Darris with the sweet pull up. Makes it 4 nothing. And there's that tempo that Upper wants. Quick jumper, pull up shot. That one goes short. Nice save, though, as Banks takes to the air out of bounds and gets it out to Bayless. They'll keep their possession alive. Barto, it's a five on four right now. Combs tries driving in, reverses. Gets it stripped for a moment. And they'll reset once again. Two minutes gone by, four nothing upper. And a travel. First turnover. I can see why the refs didn't want to call a foul there because the defender was just standing, didn't make any movements. He kind of just ran into him and then fell over. Yeah, he held his ground. He didn't jump into him. Good movements. There's a great job there by Burke to get the rejection. But an offensive rebound by Isles. Back out to Darris. Looks back door to Lamb, and he's going to get fouled. So you take a look at the replay on the back door. And that's going to be the second on Noah Burke. That's tough for the Redman if he gets in foul trouble. He's their main post player to, to live inside with. If he gets in foul trouble, they're going to have a rough night tonight. Kessler takes the inbound. Another backdoor to Lamb. This time he will get the layup to fall. 
Six nothing. Timeout early on here by Bucyrus. It's a full timeout. Darris, Lamb, and Isles all with a field goal each. His upper lead, 6 0, with 5.25 left here in this opening quarter. To so take a look at the replay, just great passing to Isles for the opening bucket. And then Darris from the elbow, and then the one you just saw moments ago, the backdoor cut, got underneath the defense and in for the layup. We want to welcome everybody watching live and free this evening on the OH Reports. Let us know where you're watching from. Give us a shout out. We'll shout you out as we get ready to begin Christmas week. A week away from Christmas Eve. Be a part of the fan zone. Get some comments out there on Facebook and YouTube. As the Redmen breaking their huddle. Bit of a collision there on the inbounds, but they do get it in the combs. Bayless will take it, and he will cross the timeline. Closely guarded by Darris, does get the backdoor cut. Nice passing, layup shot, good. That's yeah, a great drive by Combs and kick to Coppler for the layup. Coppler just into the game, and he makes it 6-2, but right back at you. Kessler with his first field goal. So four field goals by four different Rams. And that's that inside-out game we talked about pregame. All their shots have come from inside the paint so far. And an uncharacteristic error there. Caught the ball, stepped on the baseline. It'll go back to the Rams with 448 left here in this opening quarter. Cameron Lewis now checks in. And Tyson O'Brien now checking in. Looks like Bucyrus is going to go to more of a uh, zone defense here. Something that the girls did earlier on. It's like a triangle and two defense. Three in the air, off the front iron. Rebound to Bucyrus, their first board of the game. And, and we, like you said, the girls did it earlier, and they played it very well. Turnovers killed them and rebounds killed them. Nice ball fake layup. In and out, though. Rebound to Bucyrus, but stolen right back and then given back. A lot going on right there. Bucyrus turned it over for the fourth time, but Upper gave it right back to their first turnover. Midway point in the first quarter, 8-2 to two in favor of the Rams. And I like the look there by Banks, but just over the reach of Tyson there. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great pass by Randy Banks. Just a hair over O'Brien's head, or that's a backdoor layup. For an easy two. Tyrone Mass now checking in for Bucyrus. One of their leading contributors in the JV game. Nine players have already checked in for Bucyrus here four minutes into this game. Lamb's going to try a three off the back iron, but an offensive rebound. Put back good. Ethan Kessler using his height to his advantage to make it 10 to 2. Yeah, the offensive rebound right back up with the shot by Kessler. I mean, it's exact. It, it's textbook. It's what you want out of an offensive rebound. Trap and another turnover. That's what Coach Winslow was telling me before the game is they're going to try and pick up the pick up the heat on Bucyrus, try and force some more turnovers. That's Upper Sandusky basketball, and as they're getting healthier, that's what they want to get back to doing, that full court press, that trapping as well. Yeah, and the trap that they run there at half court, they press, they fall into a trap as they're going to get a wide open three by Darius. He can't knock it down. That, that trapping defense is going to be tough to get through for anybody in the N10. Bayless from the elbow, pulls up, nicely done. He hits the second field goal of the game for Bucyrus. It's 10-4. Back comes upper. Kessler for three, and he hit it. Kessler, Mr. Do-It-All. He has two layups, and now a three-pointer to his name so far in this game. Seven points. It's 13-4. So that's knocked out of bounds, and it will stay with the Redmonds. We take a look at the three inside-out game, what we were talking about, driving it in. Pulling the defense in and then kicking it out for the open look. Redmond looking to inbounds. They do. Coppler 
is going to get fouled going up, and he'll go to the line. That foul's going to go against Cayman Isles this first, the team's first. And Coppola does a really good job there. Backdoor cut, great pass to find him, and let's see if he converts the free throws. So he gets ready for the first shot from the line tonight. He got it. Third point for Coppola. Second free throw off the front of the iron, no good. But an offensive rebound. Nice back door, good passing, layup good. Great hustle by O'Brien on the rebound, rotates it all the way around to the top of the key and they get a back door layup. Two more points for Coppler on the night and a great assist by Bayless. Somehow, some way, Levi Lamb works his way through two defenders and gets the bucket. 15-7, but quickly back comes Bayless and company. Back and forth we go, up and down the floor. Who can score the fastest? That layup shot no good. No call either. And back will come to Cyrus. Lewis over to O'Brien, now to Bayless. He's got four points early on. He's going to go for six right there. 15-11. Over the lamb. They get it inside. Another nice take. This time Montgomery with his first field goal. 17-11 as we approach 90 seconds left here in quarter number one. And it's all, all five starters from Upper have scored. And it's really interesting to see that too because Busiris is trying to play a 2-3 zone, but Upper still getting into the paint at will. And they're using their height. Bayless Way offline for that one. Tried the three. Only him and Coppler have scored thus far. Isles gets it to Montgomery. He's going to try a deep three off the back iron. It's going to be punched out and taken by Bayless. He's going to try to drive in. Nice spin move open. Look, shot good. Malachi Bayless starting off well in the first quarter. He is a crucial piece for these Redmen if they want to have a chance tonight. Montgomery across the timeline. Fakes the pass to Kessler, gets it to Darris. Actually to Lamb. Now to Darris. 40 seconds left in the quarter. Isles gets it baseline to Kessler for two off the back iron. Rebound to Cyrus. Bayless is going to slow things down. They may hold this for the last shot. 17-13, upper. Oh, ankle breaker, three off the front iron, though. And the rebound to upper with 18 seconds. Darris into the lane. Euro step too strong, but Isles is there with the rebound, and he's going to get fouled. There's that size for upper Shandusky. Isles uses his height to go up over two smaller Busiris defenders, get the offensive rebound, and he's going to... They're going to call that no shot. They're going to take him to the floor. I thought for sure he was going up for a shot on it. But it's going to be out of bounds with 11.8 left here in the quarter. That was Mass's first foul, the team's third. And now another new substitution into the game, Jackson Farrar. Yeah, Busiris trying to go big here. Two of their bigger young players on the floor right now. Lamb gets it back over to Darris. Five seconds left. Kessler now to Lamb for three. Off the iron, no good. Rebound bouncing around, and the quarter's going to end. We played one here at Upper Sandusky. Rams lead you, Cyrus, 17-13. You're watching Boys High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. 
If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Back here at Upper Sandusky, 17-13 the score. Rams in front of you, Cyrus, Travis Berardi, Joshua Banks here. And Upper seemed to have control early on, but Malachi Bayless has kept the Redmen in this one. Yeah, absolutely. Malachi hit, knocked down a couple of jumpers, started to feel his shot a little bit. And let's not forget that Dylan Coppler also had five, six in that quarter to help keep them in the game as well, is we're going to have an early Upper Sandusky timeout here in the second quarter. So both teams have used one timeout thus far in this game. Justin Heilman, the sophomore guard, was trapped and forced Coach Winslow to take the first timeout. While we have a moment, let's thank our sponsors, the ones that allow us to show you these games live and free on the OH Report. Wilson Tire, Chris Darris, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Quest Federal Credit Union, Kimmel Corporation, Spherion Mid-Ohio, Frito-Lay, and as always, the OH Report and BS Media Productions. Thank you all for allowing this game and all of our games to be live and mostly free. Internet. Depending. That's why I said mostly live. Always free. Mostly live. Yeah, I had the opposite. So, always live, but Always free, mostly live. That's it. It's been a long day, folks. I've been here since 11. We've all been here since like 11.30. Yeah. Free, just remember. Mostly live, yes. Anyway, Rams unable to score on that first possession. They got bored to sleep with what I was trying to say. So back comes Bucyrus. Works around to Bartow. Puts it up. He's going to go to the line. Nice take to the hole and he'll get two shots. We'll see who the foul is on. That's going to go against Brock Montgomery, his first. First free throw is good. Barto makes the first, makes it 17-14. Second one in. His first two points, and it's a two-point game, 17-15. Back come the Rams. Kessler into the corner to Montgomery. He's going to drive it in, look for the kick, and said to get it right to Isles. Back out to Heilman. Tried to force it inside, but a turnover. Great defense by Banks there to step in front of that post feed and get the steal for the Redmen. B. Cyrus with a chance to tie or take the lead. Kick out right side, three in the air. Yes, B. Cyrus leads. O'Brien with his first points. It's 18-17. Back comes Montgomery. Into the corner for Kessler for three. He answers right back. Kessler with 10 points already. And it's 20 to 18. Ethan Kessler has not missed a shot yet this evening, folks. Barto, right side. It's stolen away, though. Quickly ahead, Heilman. Layup was blocked, but they say he got his hand, and it will be a foul against Usiris on the run out. Yeah, it looked like O'Brien just kind of stuck his hand up in the air and tried to smack it down instead of actually trying to go up and block the shot. Two shots coming up. Hello to Barb Smith out there. Good job, Levi. Let's go, Rams. Anybody else wants to comment? Get up. We get enough comments. We get a fan zone tonight, folks, so keep the comments coming. Adam is so excited to get this fan zone out tonight. We just need the comments from you folks. Even let us. What do you want for Christmas? Christmas is eight days away. What do you want for your Christmas gifts? Something like that. Anything. 
We'll have a conversation tonight. Heilman hits both. As Josh Heilman checks into the game, replacing Cayman Isles. Layup no good. Put back though is good by Josh Heilman. Four straight for the Rams. Actually, seven straight for the Rams, I should say. Yeah. Deep Ruth. three for Heilman. He was trying to feel it, but instead, it's going to go out of bounds, and I think it should go. No, they're going to say one off the head of Abu Cyrus. It'll yep. Stay. Heilman went up for the rebound, and he knocked it off of Combs' head. Any way possible. We got a stoppage. Substitution for the Redmen. I think we might have like an injury or some blood. Just have to get that checked out. Aaron Smith wants for Christmas a Ram win. It's a pretty good wish there. <laughs> Heilman to Darris, back to Justin. Nearly throws it away, but his brother picks it back up and gets it right back to him. Josh to Justin. Now to Darris, double teamed. Drives it in, gets it back out. Darius is going to try to three, and he hits nothing but nylon. Five points for Darius. It's 27-18. And the question now becomes, if you're Cyrus and Coach Gifford, how long do you stay in this zone? As Upper Sandusky is showing you, we can beat you with a three. How long do you stay in the zone? A 10-0 Ram run. And they have a chance to add on for more. Lamb. Stripped away, though. Quickly ahead, layup shot, yes. Lewis with his first points. It's 27-20. We're going to get a 30-second timeout by the Redmen. Bayless had a lane, but he saw an even more open Lewis for the easy lane. Say what, well, this has been a fun first half so far. A lot of back and forth. Upper Snusky doing everything they can to pull away. Knocking down shots, and, and Bucyrus just not going away. This has been a blast to see so far. And it was it's the Rams containing Bayless here in this second quarter, allowing them to take that run. It's Can Bucyrus create some more offense with somebody else as well to get Bayless back into it? Yeah, who else is going to step up on their roster and score 8, 10, 12 points tonight to allow them to not double Bayless because we're already seeing that. As soon as he touches the ball, he's getting doubled no matter where he's at on the floor. 27-20 on the Chris Darris and Edward Jones and Wilson Tyre scoreboard. Saturday evening basketball from Upper Sandusky. We'll get a look at some other Northern 10 scores as well. Coming up here shortly as we approach the midway point of the second quarter. And now referees are going to have a little bit of a chat. So let's see if I can get some scores for you. Colonel Crawford taking on Seneca East this evening while Buckeye Central is taking on Carey. Back to action. Rams. Lamb. Tried to get it to Montgomery, but it's deflected out of bounds, and it'll go back to Bucyrus here. Crawford leading Seneca East, 25-21 with four minutes left in the second quarter. It's Combs across the half-court line. It's deflected off of the Rams, and it'll stay 
in possession of Fusiris. Inbounds is stolen. Here comes the Upper Sandusky Rams. Darris in the lane, double team, gets it back out to Heilman. Kessler off the side of the iron, though, but an offensive rebound. Pass into Montgomery, layup shot off the rim, no good. Looked like he had an easy bucket there, but just missed. And it stays 27-20, under four minutes to play in the half. Sometimes layups are too easy. Bayless to Combs. Gets it stripped for a second, gets it back. Forces it inside, goes off the leg of a ram, and it's a turnover. Back comes Montgomery. Tough shot, no good. Offensive rebound, put back, no good. We're going to get a foul. That's going to be Burke's third. So that will send Ethan Kessler to the line for two shots. And this is the first free throw. Kessler leading the way so far with 10 points here in the first half. Almost forgot to mention Mohawk and Winford will be playing tonight as well. And Kessler's really done it from all over the floor so far in this first half. Two threes, a couple layups, unable to convert the free throws. Inside Bayless, he'll go to the line. That's a great cut by Bayless to get up to the free throw line, get with the left hand down into the paint to draw the foul. Really back and forth action so far here in the first half. I mean, what one team does, the other team answers most of the time. That's going to be the second on Brock Montgomery, team's third. Bayless leading the Redmen with eight points, makes the first. Isles and Lamb checking back in. Gets them both. And Isles checking back into the game, really asserted himself in that first quarter with his size down low. Isles off his leg, turnover. Fourth. Upper Sandusky turnover. However, they've turned Bucyrus over 10 times. And bounds Bardo. And that's a travel. Unforced error. The 11th turnover. And if you're Bardo there, do you even need to keep up, pick up your dribble? Dribble to where you want to take the basketball, get a pass a little quicker, instead of taking that hard stop and dragging your pivot foot. Heilman over the Darris, back to him, working it around the Josh now for three off the back iron, rebound to Bayless. 2.50 left here in the second quarter. Bayless pulls up, hits the back of the iron, and back will come the Rams. Darris out the Lamb for three, yes. Levi Lamb, first three of the night. He has seven. It's 30 to 22. And we talked about Levi before the game. You can't give him a wide open three. He's going to knock it down more often than he misses it. Combs gets the Bayless. Crosses over. Gets it stripped away. Darris to Lamb. Layup good. Nine for Lamb. Five straight. Timeout. 32-22, another Bucyrus timeout. And a huge run here by the Rams. Creating turnovers, wrecking havoc on the defensive end to get easy layups. 
And if you're Bucyrus, you, you got to play better defense on the perimeter. We talked about it before the game in the pregame. Levi Lamb, Ethan Kessler, they're going to knock the shots down if you give it to them, and they're just going to continue to give it to them tonight, it looks like. Halftime score, Colonel Crawford leading Seneca East 32-26, and then after one, Carey leads Buckeye Central 13-4. And for you Browns fans, I've heard, read, Justin Tucker, the most accurate kicker in NFL history, has missed a field goal for the Ravens and had one blocked. So for some reason, the Browns might be getting a Christmas gift this year. Bartos stripped away. Quickly ahead, and Heilman's going to go to the line for two free throws. And that's what you call a good foul, if there are good fouls, because Bayless is making Heilman earn the two points the hard way. Absolutely hard foul. Don't let him convert the layup. And he didn't go for any of the body parts. He went for the ball. And it's paid off as Justin missed the front end. Second free throw, good. 33-22, under two minutes left here in the first half. Combs, looking back door for Bayless, instead dribbles it off his leg, he pulled an ollie. Going too fast, getting around that corner, dribbled it right off of his leg. Gotta slow down, get the open shot. He had a wide open drive to the bucket if he would have just taken his time and got a good shot. Ball deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Upper Sandusky with 142 left. As we see the fan zone up and running. So anybody want to continue to comment in there? Feel free to. You comment it, we'll read it. Like Missy Bradenbach. Come on, Rams, looking, rooting for you, Levi, number 22. Levi with nine points. Nearly a turnover. Darris, the pull-up jumper off the rim. Offensive rebound. Put back, no good. Rebound, Bucyrus. We're going to get a foul on the Rams. That's going to be Kessler's first, team's fourth, as Isles is getting ready to check in. Eighty-three seconds left. First half. Bayless just gets across the timeline in time. Gets it over to Combs. Works it inside to Coppler. Barely gets it back out. Now Banks crosses, takes it to the hole. Nice pass. Layup good. Beautiful dish by Banks as he got into the lane. Found a wide open Coppler as Darius is going to get around the defense and get himself a layup. Every time Cyrus gets a bucket, Upper Sandusky hits the gas and answers. 35-24. And another... Unforced error. Maybe a little bit forced. But still, the 15th turnover on the Redmond. Yeah, I mean, and if you're Bayless, you have to know where you're at on the court. You just crossed the timeline. you got to make that pass forward, not behind you. There's not enough room behind you to throw the pass behind you when you're that close to the half-court line. Somebody needs to start the clock. There it goes. It looks like head coach Jeff Winslow is going to sit on this and take the final shot of the half. And the way they're shooting the ball this half, I don't blame him one bit. But also allows you to go into the break with at least an 11-point lead. The largest lead that this team has had, I believe, going into the break, if not since the first game against Willard. And coach Winslow is forced to take a timeout. So they will write things up here with 12 seconds left. 
not happy with how that was turning out. That's what you'll get sometimes with this young squad. Yeah, I mean, if you're Coach Winslow, you got put in a bad position there, but you still got 12 seconds left. You had a timeout to use. Plenty of time to still get yourself a good shot and extend this lead. As you see Coach Winslow talking with his boys right here. They know with the lead they have, they have the opportunity to maybe get win number one on the season. Especially going into the pre-Christmas matchup with Buckeye Central as well. Absolutely, it's a huge game for them tonight trying to get that first win. And then after they get that first win, if they get it tonight, gonna be looking to go on a winning streak. Going to be look for two and two in a row come next Friday night. And as well, get back to one game under 500 in the conference. Levi Lamb will inbound on the sideline. Get it to Darris behind the timeline. Ten seconds left in the half. Darris looks inside for Kessler. Kicks it back out to Lamb. Lamb's going to try a deep three. Got it at the buzzer. Levi Lamb, have yourself a half. 12 points. And the Rams going in with the 38 24 lead. That's an NBA three. Nothing but nylon. We head to the break. 38 24 Upper Sandusky. We'll be back with the Kimmel, Kimmel Corporation halftime. Stats analysis and much more. You're watching Boys High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. What a shot. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Beckham in the house. Watch a little soccer. Nice. Bro, are you eating my lace? Yep. Wow. It's the FIFA World Cup. And it's football. All right, don't start. Those are chips. Crisps. Those are cleats on my chair. Boots. But that is soccer. No, my friend, that is football. OK. There's 700 million people watching this little football match right now. That's got to hurt. Ha! Ah, definition. Soccer is a round ball. Football is an oval ball. Like those golden balls? These souvenirs. Wow. You gonna talk about your Teen Choice Awards? It's so sad. That hurts. That hurts, actually. But we'll ask the world. Is it called football? Or soccer? It's football. Hey, Ruff, that's a football tackle. We're playing soccer here. Mia, you're on my field. It's football here. She's right. It's soccer. Have you won two World Cups? Does it look like I've won two World Cups? All right, Brandy. The debate rages on. Is it football? It's football. Soccer. Football. It's soccer. My Doritos. Football. Or is it soccer? It all comes down to this. Come on, Jules. Soccer, baby. We're doing that again, huh? It's a classic. It's Chicharito against Howard. He shoots Pacino! Oh, the Cheetos! And Howard's down! No, Chetos. Football started the 12th century. That's like ancient. Then US football evolved from soccer rugby. I own my own soccer team. I know. You just said the word soccer. Did not. You said soccer because you know you said soccer. You heard yourself say soccer. You heard wrong. Absolutely not. My house, my rules, you said soccer. Prove it. Learn it, love it. Are you soccer. certified by Parks and Recreation to be on this field? Don't hung with Tostitos. It says soccer mom, not football mom. You ever argue with soccer mom? Bring it. I'm just telling you, get ready. Brought it. Go ahead, tell them. <laughs> You're a very difficult house guest, you know that? I did say soccer. I knew it! 
He's turned many doubters into believers. Go! We're gonna need more chips, by the way. Crisps. Whatever. No matter what you call it, don't forget the chips for the FIFA World Cup. Christmas. Thirty-eight twenty-four, the score. Upper Sandusky ahead of Bucyrus here at the break in the Kimmel Corporation halftime show. Travis Berardi alongside Joshua Banks here from Upper Sandusky. We've been here all day. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics for this one. Once again, brought to you by Kimmel Corporation. Thirty-eight twenty-four, the score. Five threes by the Rams in that first half. Only one by Bucyrus. Also ten two-point field goals to eight. They're out rebounding. Bucyrus 13-11. They forced 15 turnovers while only turning it over four times, which is a big one, a big stat that Upper Sandusky's had problems with thus far this season. Fouls, nobody really in foul trouble. Bucyrus 5-6. of six. Upper Sandusky, three of six. Turnovers, 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 turnovers. That, that's, that's the story of the first half. We knew Upper Sandusky was going to shoot the ball well. They, they normally do shoot the ball well. They're forcing turnovers. This is the best defense we've seen Upper play yet this year. And then when you add that to only committing four turnovers and knocking down five threes, there's your swing. Yeah, the threes have been big for Upper Sandusky. They are a team that can shoot it from beyond the arc. Individual scoring for this first half. First for the Redmen, Malachi Bayless leads the Redmen with 10 points. Dylan Coppler with seven. Tyson O'Brien with three. And Cameron Lewis and Blaine Bardo both with two each. As for Upper Sandusky, Levi Lamb, big first half, 12 points. Ethan Kessler, 10 points. Holden Darris, seven Justin Heilman with three, and then Josh Heilman, Cayman Isles, and Brock Montgomery each with two. Score by quarter, 17-13 upper in the first, 21-11 in the second for the 38-24 halftime. 
League. Let's thank some sponsors now. The ones who were, have allowed this one to go live and free tonight. As us at the OH Report, always free, mostly live. Depending on internet and OHSA regulations. But most of the time, we are live. Let's thank these sponsors. Wilson Tire. At Wilson Tire Company, we sell new and used tires and provide tire services to customers in Upper Sandusky and the surrounding areas. No matter which location you visit, we'll prove that Wilson Tire Company is the best when it comes to tire services and alignment. Chris Darris, Edward Jones Financial Advisor. Whether you're planning for retirement, saving for college, grandchildren, or just trying to protect the financial future of the ones you care about most, Chris can develop specific strategies to help you achieve your goals. Quest Federal Credit Union. Check out Quest Federal Credit Union, your local member-owned full-service financial institution with products and services for members of all ages. Kimmel Corporation. Kimmel Corporation is a fourth-generation family-owned and operated company. We understand your business isn't just your business, it's your life. That's why we've dedicated ourselves to help companies like yours look and perform at their very best. Spherion Mid-Ohio, let us help you build the career you want or the awesome team you want. We build real relationships with you so we can understand what you need and get it for you fast. And Frito-Lay, we are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments. Also want to shout out Brian Skaronsky and the OH Report BS Media Productions. That'll do it here for the Kimmel Corporation. Halftime, 38-24. Upper Sandusky, and you got to think they want to start the second half like they ended the first on a big run. Absolutely. Come out, get a steal, get a bucket. That's just a huge swing for them if they can do that. Who will get win number one in the Northern 10? We'll find out in most likely 16 minutes of game time. Lamb on the steal. Layup good, and that is exactly what the Rams wanted to do out of the break. 40 to 24. Can't ask for much more out of the halftime break. Get a steal, get a bucket. Bayless. Triple team. Nice passing, though, inside. Layup shot off the rim, though. Good offensive rebound, though. Burke puts it back up and in. Great job by Noah Burke there to get the offensive rebound and go right back up with it. His first points of the game, it's 40-26. to 26. Lamb gets it back out to Isles. Now into the corner. Three in the air by Kessler. Yes. Ethan Kessler's third three of the game. Yeah, nobody's rotating to that corner for Cyrus. 43-26. Combs works it around the Bayless. Bayless, he's going to try the three off the side of the rim and saved, but into the hands of Upper. Back comes Holden Darris across the timeline. Three on three. Somehow threads the needle to Isles. Count the bucket in the foul. Great finish by Cayman Isles right there. And I don't know why, but this place went extremely silent when I said that. I, don't, I apologize to everybody. That was weird. It went deathly silent in here. Foul's going to go against Randy Banks' is first as Isles will go to the line. Trying for his fifth point, and he barely hits the rim, no good. And then we're going to get a foul about 90 feet away, and it's going to be the third on Brock Montgomery. So Cyrus will get it back. And, and Upper Sandusky still in the press. They, they want to make you go fast when you can't go fast. 19-point lead, and we're going to get a block. That's going to go against Levi Lamb, his first. And, and that's great defense by Levi. I mean, he's moving his feet. He's staying beside him. He just kind of pushed up into him just a little bit too much, and that's why he got the foul call. Laps in defense there. Gets it inside. Double team kicks it back out to Bardo. But Darris is there with the interception. Into the lane, gets the man up in the air, puts up the layup, and puts it in. 
Great ball fake by Holden Darris to get a wide open layup. Gets Bayless in the air and goes up and finishes. 21 point Ram lead. And another turnover. 47 26. Rams looking to add on. Two minutes gone by here, third quarter. Montgomery gets it back out to Lamb. Into the lane, left side to Kessler. He already has three threes. Instead, he tried to put it into Isles, deflected away. And an easy take by Malachi Bayless. He now has 12 points. It's 47 28. Yeah, great defense down low. Gets a wide open layup. And then Montgomery is going to hoist the three ball. In and out. Ball still going around. It's going to be an offensive rebound. Montgomery gets it to Kessler. Now back out to Darris. Left side to Lamb for three. Again, all oh, but down. But an offensive rebound put back good by Kessler. 15 for Ethan. It's 49-28. And that's a great job there by Kessler to use his size, get the offensive rebound. And again, he got the rebound, didn't try to kick it out. He got it. He went right back up strong with it. As Cyrus is going to have another turnover. Number 19 on the night as the Redmen are going to make a couple substitutions. Coppler and O'Brien. Justin Heilman in now. Gets it to Isles. Now to Darris. Inside the Lamb. Takes it to the hole and good. Levi Lamb turns with that left side. Goes up with the right hand strong. And we're going to have a timeout by the Redmen. 51-28. A 23-point lead. The largest of the night by the Rams. And like I said, right as we started the third quarter, if Upper Sandusky can start the third like they finish the second, they'll be in good shape. And that is exactly what head coach Jeff Winslow's squad has done. Once again, we want to welcome everybody watching live and free tonight on the OH Report. Aaron Smith, once again, commenting. Good job so far, Levi Go Rams. And Danny Stansberry, let's go Rams. A lot of Rams fans out there. I should say Upper Sandusky fan, Rams fans, not Los Angeles Rams fans. A lot of Levi Lamb fans. Well done, sir. Yes, a lot of Levi Lamb. Upper Sandusky Ram fan. Yeah, we should, we should call it the Ram zone instead of the fan zone. Puns everywhere. <laughs> Puns for everybody. Thankfully, we're about to resume play, though. I'll stop with the puns for now. Combs with it. Gets across the timeline. Works around the trap and gets it to Banks. Over to O'Brien for three off the back of the rim. Rebound fought for and taken out by Bucyrus. They'll get another shot. Banks again to O'Brien. Tried forcing it in. It's deflected off of Upper Sandusky. It'll stay with Bucyrus at the 4.15 left in the third. That's a great job by Banks to hustle for that rebound and get the steal. I'd say one thing I've noticed about him this is the first time I've got to see him play this year. He is a facilitator. He's not looking to score at all. He's trying to find his teammates and get the open basket. Lewis to inbound. Right inside, rejected by Isles. Return to sender. Here comes Darris across the timeline. He's going to drive it into the lane left side. Three in the air by Kessler, and he knew it right as it left his hands. Ethan Kessler cannot miss tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Four threes as that's deflected out of bounds by Levi Lamb. It'll stay with Cyrus. You look, Darris drives in, draws the defense, extra pass to the open man, and boom, nothing but nylon. 54-28. Bardo with the inbounds. Picks up his dribble, looking. Finally gets it off to O'Brien. Drives baseline, kicks it around. Back to Bardo. Right side. Three is good. Tam Lewis. Great shot by Lewis. Great pass by Bardo. Now, he could have taken that shot from the free throw line. Instead, went to an even more opened Lewis. 
and he's rewarded for it. On the other side, Lamb off the back iron. Went for the save, but it's out of bounds. And it'll go to B. Cyrus. 18 points from Kessler, 16 from Lamb, 9 from Darris. Bounced scoring attack tonight for head coach Jeff Winslow. Nearly a steal there. O'Brien gets across the timeline, though. Gets it away to Burke before the double team. Back in. Misses the layup, knocked out of bounds, and it will go to Upper Sandusky. Tough break there. Yeah, tough break for the Redmen there. Had a nice look in the, underneath the hoop, couldn't finish. And it's just, again, it's just Upper Sandusky's size. Heilman right side to Kessler. Nice pass inside to Darris. Can't get it to fall, but Isles is there. He gets it stripped away. Mass with the steal over to O'Brien. Didn't get enough lift under that, but he gets his own rebound. O'Brien inside. Kick back out, but a travel. 20th. Hugh Cyrus turnover of the night. Not going to win very many basketball games when you have 20 turnovers. Only way you do that is if you force 20 turnovers but they've only forced six tonight. Isles gets it over to Kessler. Back to Darris, straight away three. Can't get the bounce to go, but Kessler's there with the rebound. In the Lamb, Lamb puts up the shot, it's deflected, and rebound out to be Cyrus. Granted, Upper Sandusky doesn't make the shot there, but again, it's one of those things where they're getting multiple possessions on one shot. Combs gets it over to O'Brien. Works around now to Mass. Loses the handle, though, and that's going to be a backcourt violation turnover. Mass tried a couple crossover moves there, lost the handle, and he was the only one, the first one back there to touch it. Sometimes you can dribble the ball too much, and that might, been, might have been one of those situations. Sam Smith now will check in, the senior guard for Upper Sandusky, first minutes tonight. Darris takes it. Gets a screen, moves in, right side, three in the air. Yes. He Who can't miss. Ethan Kessler does it again. He can't miss. 21 points. Bardo to Combs. Picked up his dribble, trying to get it away. It's stolen by Darris. Darris into the lane, puts it up too strong, but a rebound by Smith. He puts it up and in. Sam Smith on the board. 59-31 upper. Offensive rebounds and wide open shots. 28 point lead, O'Brien around the rim and no. And now we're gonna get a foul. That's gonna go against Mass, his second. Tough shot by Smith. He was directly underneath the hoop, but able to jump to the right side, use the backboard to his advantage, and gets it to drop. 28-point lead for Upper with 54 seconds left here in quarter number three. Mass closely on Darris. Gets a screen. Darris into the lane. Jump stop. Euro step. Count the bucket and one. What a move by Holden Darris. Step through, Euro step, through the contact, up and finish. Can't ask for much more. The third foul on Mass. Darris will go to the line. Now with 11 points. Mega 12. It's it's the free throw. Six 
62-31. That shot no good, rebound and another foul. That's going to be Mass's fourth. Twenty-five seconds left here. Quarter number three, sixty-two thirty-one. More subs in for the Rams. That's taken away. Back comes Cyrus. And Bardo is going to go to the line. It's going to go on Eric Godfried. First free throw in and out, no good. Sarsha's first free throw attempts of the half. Second free throw, good. Rams with two seconds. One second, three at the buzzer. Off the back iron, no good, and that is how the quarter is going to end. 62-32 Upper Sandusky at the end of the third. You're watching Boys High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Eight minutes left here from Upper Sandusky. Rams in control. This one, 62-32. Travis Brody alongside Josh Banks. And the Rams looking to add on here to start quarter number four. Godfried yeah. fouled. Just been an overall great game played by the Rams this evening. Six turnovers on the evening so far. I mean, if you're going to turn the ball over that few of times, you're going to win a lot of basketball games. Foul's going to go against Banks. It's the team's fifth. Sam Smith with it across the timeline. Right side of Josh Heilman. Outside to Godfrey for three off the front iron. No good. Rebound, though, to be Cyrus. Bayless pulls up from the free throw line and he hits. 14 points for him. Only four, though, in the second half. Quickly ahead comes Upper Sandusky. Heilman, right side, open, look for three. Didn't hit anything. And saved back out to be Cyrus. It's a great hustle by Parker Osborne to even save that ball, though. Take inside, no good. And we're going to get a foul on Noah Burke, his fourth. 
A little bit too aggressive there going for the offensive rebound by Burke. You're allowed to reach over top of him, but you're not allowed to put your body into him to take the ball from him. And that seems to be what he did there on that. 6.47 left in regulation. Montgomery, straight away three. Josh Heilman off the back iron, no good. And that's going to be a foul on the rebound. Now I go against Sam Smith, his first. Yeah, just like down here on this end on Burke, he jumped up. He could have went over top of him, but he jumped his body into him to knock it out of his hands. That's why the foul got called. Bayless. Gets it left side. That's Coppler. Lobs it inside, but too strong. But they're going to say it went last off of Montgomery, and it'll stay with you, Cyrus. And that's a great pass by Coppler to get it inside to Burke. Just a little bit too strong, went over his head. As Upper gets a steal on the inbound. The inbounds is stolen. Justin Heilman gets it around to Parker Osborne. Right side to Josh. Two minutes gone by here, fourth quarter, 62-34 upper. Osborne inside, can't get the ball to go. Rebound out, W. Cyrus. Bayless. Turnaround jumper, doesn't get the friendly bounce though. Rebound out to Upper Sandusky. Montgomery across the timeline. Works it around to Osborne. And that's a travel. One too many shuffles there. Seventh Upper Sandusky turnover. A little bit too much happy feet when he caught the ball there in the corner. Cam Lewis checks back in for Bucyrus. Coppler gets it to Bayless, back to Coppler. That's going to be a jump ball. It'll stay with the Redmond. And I've really been surprised that by the Bucyrus game plan so far that we've seen tonight. They're trying to feed the post, and across the board, they don't really have the size advantage down low to feed the post. Nice pass inside, layup in and out, no good. But a steal, and we're going to get two free throws. Bayless hangs, can't hit, but he'll go to the line for two. Fouls on Josh Heilman. After three quarters, Carey, 39, Buckeye Central, 17. And yes, your Browns won 13-3. Colonel Crawford leading Seneca East, 62-55 with 2.10 left in the fourth. They went on a 13-0 run. So they were down 55-49. Wow. But a big run gets them back into it. And a halftime score, Winford 40, Mohawk 34. That might be the shock of the night. That's a big score for Colonel Crawford fans and Carey fans. Bayless hits. Heilman hits. Back and forth we go. Heilman now with five. Close shot, no good. Rebound to Sam Smith. Four on three. Right side three. No good. Offensive rebound, Montgomery. Heilman able to pick it up. Gets it stripped, though. Numbers four. Hugh Cyrus, and they get it to go. Randy Banks with his first points of the game. 64-37 coming up on the midway point. Montgomery counted and won. Hang scores, and he's going to go to the line for one. Great strength there by Brock Montgomery to finish that layup. Took the contact, regrouped himself, 
And then just gently put the ball in, make it 66-37. First foul on Cam Lewis. Montgomery hits the free throw, makes it five points for him. And once again, a 30-point lead at the midway point of quarter number four. And just through the hands of Coppler, another turnover. That's number 25 on the night for Bucyrus. Story of their night. Justin Heilman. The C's opened up, but he lost the handle. And he gives it back for the 10th turnover by the Red, by he, Upper Sandusky. He's right. seen those defenders separate. He said, I got a wide open layup, and he got way ahead of himself with the dribble. Cyrus looking to finish the game on a high note at three. No good. Quickly ahead goes Justin Heilman. Gets it right side. Three in the air. Yes. Eric Godfried with his first points of the night. Great find by Heilman for Godfried in the corner. Knocks down a huge shot as Bayless is going to answer. That shot way off. And we'll go back to Hugh Cyrus. Georgie Floyd checking in. Georgie Floyd with it. Turns it over. Heilman layup, but he's fouled and will go to the line for two. Foul's going to go on Cam Lewis. Kevin Combs with the foul. Or Cam Lewis, yeah. You're right. You know it wasn't right? The announcer. One of her few mistakes today, and she's called two games. Very nice job calling two games as well by the announcer today. Heilman misses the first. Rams only shooting 50% from the line tonight. That'll help it out a little bit. Under three to play. Turnaround jumper, good. Chris Neal makes a nice move in the post to go get a layup. His first minutes, and he gets the bucket, but right on the other end. Brock Montgomery, he now has seven. Back to a 32-point lead. And... and I think that's kind of been the story of the night so far between both of these teams. Every time Bucyrus gets a bucket, upper answers, and then normally their forces, Floyd's going to attempt a three. Normally they force a turnover right after they got that bucket to answer, so then it becomes a four, six, eight-point swing as Montgomery's going to attempt a three. Heilman with the rebound. Put back no good, rebound out to Bucyrus. Ahead, layup, blocked, but a foul. With 154 left. That'd be Sam Smith second. Kevin Combs will go to the line for two. This is the first. Is 
Makes one of two. 31 point lead. Montgomery into the lane. Scoops nearly got it to fall. Instead, he'll go to the line for two. Great move by Brock to get in the paint again. Almost scoops and scores. Fouls on Brock Frost, his first. Crawford defeats Seneca East, 69-58. Braxton Baker, 35 points. Trevor Vogt, 15 points. First free throw, no good. Misses them both. Quickly ahead, block and one. Great drive by Combs, great defense, great hustle to get back by Godfrey. Second foul on Gottfried. Third point for Combs. Misses the free throw, though. It's knocked out of bounds. It'll go to Upper Sandusky. Eight of 12 from the line tonight is B. Cyrus. 99 seconds left in this one. Montgomery backs it out. Now we'll take it to the hole. Jump stop, kick it back out to Smith. Smith, open lane. Too short on a layup attempt, though, and rebounded out to Bucyrus, but stolen right back. Inside, Heilman going to get fouled. It's going to go against Georgie Floyd. And that'll be two shots. A bit of an injury break here. Looks like some blood. Josh Heilman checking himself. Trainer getting cleaned up, getting the floor cleaned up. While we have a second, let's thank our sponsors one more time. Wilson Tire, Chris Darris, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Quest Federal Credit Union, Kibble Corporation, Spherion Mid-Ohio, Frida Lay and the OH Report. Thank you all for allowing this game and all games to be free, mostly live, but free on the OH Report. Now, I can't say this is a condensation break, this is a bodily fluid break. A little blood on the ground. Maybe a little sweat as well. They got to get cleaned up. Hopefully getting Josh cleaned up a little bit there. As you see the Ram student section having some fun. Yeah, they don't see us. There they are. I'm guessing it's pajama night here for the student section as they, <laughs> Gene Storm would love that, for a little the Fortnite <laughs> L dance. Update from Cary. Blue Devils leading Buckeye Central 44-20 with 3.35 left in the game. This one pretty much in the books as well. Upper Sandusky finally going to get win number one on the season and win number one in the conference. 
So everything's been cleaned up, and Mr. Isles will go to the line. First time tonight. Yeah, Isles is going to step in and shoot the free throws for Heilman. And this is the first. Missed them both, but an offensive rebound. Coming up on one minute left. Montgomery, right side, three in the air. Short, but another offensive rebound. Montgomery faking around, gets it back out. To Highland. Back to Montgomery, under a minute left. Upper Snusky more than likely just going to dribble this clock out. That's what they're trying to do, keep away right now. Gets around. And now he's going to dribble. And now I think B. Cyrus is going to let him run the clock out. We're at 30 seconds. Nobody close enough to start the five-second count. Another... Non-conference matchup, Lexington leads Marysville 36-26 after three. Big non-conference matchup in D2, but this one is over. Upper Sandusky off the schneid. A 73-44 winner over Bucyrus, number one win Convincing on the season. number one win. We'll take a break, be back with our Quest Federal Credit Union MVP, as well as final stats and analysis in the Kimmel Corporation postgame. You're watching Boys High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let Spherion do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market and we're locally owned. So you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Beckham in the house. Watch a little soccer. Nice. Bro, are you eating my lace? Yep. Wow. It's the FIFA World Cup. And it's football. All right, don't start. Those are chips. Crisps. Those are cleats on my chair. Boots. But that is soccer. No, my friend, that is football. Okay. There's 700 million people watching this little football match right now. That's gotta hurt. Ha! Ah, definition. Soccer is a round ball. Football is an oval ball. Like those golden balls? These souvenirs. Wow. You gonna talk about your Teen Choice Awards? It's so sad. That hurts. That hurts, actually. But we'll ask the world. Is it called football? Football. football. Or soccer? It's football. Hey, Ruff, that's a football tackle. We're playing soccer here. Mia, you're on my field. It's football here. She's right. It's soccer. Have you won two World Cups? Does it look like I've won two World Cups? All right, Brandy. The debate rages on. Is it football? It's football. Soccer. Football. It's soccer. My Doritos. Football. Or is it soccer? It all comes down to this. Come on, Jules. Soccer, baby. We're doing that again, huh? It's a classic. It's Chicharito against Howard. He shoots Pacino! Oh, Chitos! And Howard's down! No, Chetos. Football started the 12th century, that's like ancient. Then US football evolved from soccer rugby. I own my own soccer team, I know. You just said the word soccer. Did not. You said soccer because you know you said soccer. You heard yourself say soccer. You heard wrong. Absolutely not. My house, my rules, you said soccer. Prove it. Learn it, love it. Are you certified soccer. by Parks and Recreation to be on this field? Don't hung with Tostitos. It says soccer mom, not football mom. You ever argue with soccer mom? 
bring it. I'm just telling you, get ready. Brought it. Go ahead, tell them. <laughs> You're a very difficult house guest, you know that? I did say soccer. I knew it! He's turned many doubters into believers. Go! We're gonna need more chips, by the way. Crisps. Whatever. No matter what you call it, don't forget the chips for the FIFA World Cup. Christmas. Back now with our Quest Federal Credit Union MVP, and it is Upper Sandusky's Ethan Kessler. Game high, 21 points, including five threes. First of all, congratulations. Finally, off the schneid, getting win number one. Just to take me through this game tonight, Bucyrus, they stuck with you early on, but then the end of the second quarter really turned things around. You went on a big run, and then you just took off from there. Yeah, our team tonight, uh, we've done a really good job passing, moving the ball. Uh, got a lot of open looks. I was happy with the shots we got. Our team, we've had it pretty rough, but as time's going on, like tonight, we're really getting to play good. Our team chemistry, passing it, moving it, we're looking really good, like the shots we're getting. Uh, you guys have had a tough schedule to start non-conference and conference. You know, 0-6, but you played teams like Tiffin Columbia and a good team in their district. Uh, undefeated Mohawk, but you guys took them to the limit last night. Seneca East as well, you guys played with them until late. Uh, just uh, how have you guys been able to get better game in and game out despite, you know, not getting the win until tonight? Yeah, uh, our practice is early on. A lot of our guys have been sick. It's been rough for us. I mean, this last week was really the first week that we've all been together as a team since week one against Willard. So, I mean, we're getting in. We're getting a lot of minutes. Our team's getting better and better. And we're going to make a good run here late. We just got to keep playing together. Uh, you get a little bit of a break, and then you get uh, Buckeye Central on Christmas Eve's Eve. Eve. Yep. Uh, what can you do to get that one? And maybe, you know, what you guys need to do moving forward now that you know that you have pretty much the team that you want on this court and you've seen a win? Yeah, I mean, we've done a really good job of going inside out. Uh, that's been the key of us late here. I mean, getting the, into the big guys, kicking out to our shooters, it's worked really well. And our guards have been doing a good job of driving into the post, getting open looks and little jumpers. We need to continue that, and I think we'll be good. All right, lastly, if you want to look into this camera, give anybody a shout out that you like. Go for it, my friend. Uh, just, I'd like to give a shout out to all my family and all the friends on the team. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ethan Kessler. Game high, 21 points. We're going to take a break. And I'll head back upstairs to wrap things up with Josh. You're watching Boys High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. You have better things to do than to job hunt or scramble to find your next great hire. So let's ferry on do it. We say local is our superpower because we live and work where you live and work. We know the mid-Ohio job market, and we're locally owned, so you won't find a partner who's more engaged and literally invested in your success. If you're ready for something better, start with Spherion. Visit us online at midohiojobs.net or call 419-747-7479. Welcome back inside the Quest Federal Credit Union post-game show. Travis Barardi back up here in our little broadcast area alongside Joshua Banks. And this was close early on until 
I'd say three minutes left in the second quarter when Upper Sandusky finally got things going offensively, and they just never stopped. Yeah, I mean, defensively is really where it started at. When we go over the numbers here in a second, you guys are going to see that. They forced 27 turnovers on the evening, and a lot of those turnovers led to layups, led to open threes. It led to the shots that you want to get, and that's why they win this game by 29 points. Absolutely, and, you know, it was just – this is the Upper Sandusky squad that people have been expecting to see pretty much all season. Like Ethan just said in his interview, you know, they've been sick. They have really haven't had a full week of practice as a team until this past week, and they put up a good fight against Mohawk, nearly pulled off that upset. And then tonight, their most complete showing of the season, and we'll look into the numbers right now, the, hat, the final statistics. Brought to you by Kimmel Corporation. Uh, nine threes. They really hit from beyond the arc all night. Kessler five times. Three times from Lamb. Darris hit one as well. And then Gottfried in garbage time also got one. 20 to 15, two-point field goals. Nine to two, three-point field goals. They out-rebounded Bucyrus 26-21. They forced 27 turnovers. That is upper Sandusky basketball. Getting in your face, forcing turnovers, getting runouts, and getting buckets that way. Uh, and most impressive was the way they were able to answer any time Bucyrus scored. They immediately ran out, got a layup or got a shot, got fouled. They were not letting the Redmen get any momentum. And then 8 of 12 for Bucyrus from the line. 6 of 15. It's something the Rams still need to work on is the free throws. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it was a lot of fun to watch this complete upper Sandusky basketball team. You know, you heard Ethan say in his interview, this is the first week that the whole team's been healthy. So it's going to be fun to see the rest of this year, which we get the joy of being here for every home game for upper Sandusky. It's going to be fun to watch how much more do they develop. What type of run can they go on? Because we've seen them compete with Mohawk when they didn't have a full week of practice together. Now that they're all back together, are they one of the better teams in the league? We'll, we'll have to find out as the, as the games go on, but they are back to 100%, which is great. And they do will they will get one more player back as well in Gavin Frey here shortly. Uh, an update, Carey knocks off. Buckeye Central 46-20, so they remain in the hunt as well. Cyrus Tuesday, will host Ridgedale while Upper Sandusky back here. Night before Christmas Eve, we'll have the game for you against Buckeye Central. And real quick, going over final individual scoring. First for Cyrus Malachi Bayless, 17 points. Dylan Coppler, 7 points. Cameron Lewis, 5 points. Tyson O'Brien, 3 points, as well as Blaine Bardo and Kevin Combs, Noah Burke with two points, Randy Banks two points, and two points for Chris Neal. As for Upper Sandusky, Kessler, game high 21 points, Levi Lamb 16 points, Holden Darris 12 points, seven points for Brock Montgomery, six for Justin Heilman, three for Eric Gottfried, and then four Cayman Isles, two for he Josh Heilman, two for Sam Smith. Finally, score by quarter 17 13, Upper Sandusky after one. They outscored Bucyrus 21-11 in the second to make it 38-24. A 24-8 third quarter really put it away for them. They led 62-32, and then Bucyrus outscores them 12-11. want to thank our sponsors one more time. Everybody that helped make things possible. Josh Banks on color commentary. Keaton Cooper, our camera operator. Adam Thompson running the ones and twos on the computer. Wilson Tyre as well as Chris Darris, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, our scoreboard sponsor, Quest Federal Credit Union, our MVP sponsor, Kimmel Corporation, our pregame, halftime, postgame sponsor, everybody back at the OH Report as well, Spirion Mid-Ohio, and Frito-Lay, our commercial sponsors. We want to thank the fine folks back here at Upper Sandusky High School for allowing us to be here all season long for girls and boys hoops. And most importantly, we want to thank you, the fans, for watching. Upper Sandusky gets win number one on the season. They defeat Bucyrus 73-44 for Joshua Banks. I'm Travis Burry saying so long from Upper Sandusky.